Okay, so to be honest with you, hyperthyroidism is really pretty simple to understand. And the best way to understand it is to simply understand where this condition is occurring from and then what thyroid hormone really does within the body. Okay, so hyperthyroidism is an oversecretion of thyroid hormone. And we know thyroid hormone obviously originates from the thyroid gland, which we can palpate right along kind of our uh, trachea. So what happens with this is as we have this increased secretion of thyroid hormone, this leads to an increased metabolic rate, okay? So that's what I want you to keep in mind here that um, hyperthyroidism is truly just an um, increased metabolic rate within the patient, okay? So as we understand that, we can kind of start to understand what some of the signs and symptoms are going to be and how we can treat it. All right, so some of the causes are Graves disease, which is an autoimmune reaction, and then also uh, an excessive secretion of th thyroid stimulating hormone, possibly a, a pituitary tumor or a medication reaction, okay? Now, if thyroid, in a patient that has hyperthyroidism, what can happen is they can lead to a thyroid storm. And this is really a thyroid crisis. It's, 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 it's incredibly extreme, extreme uh, hyperthyroidism, and it's very life-threatening. Some of the things that can cause this would be like an infection, stress, or trauma, okay? So with this extreme hyperthyroidism, their body goes into this hypermetabolic state. Heart rate's going to increase. The breathing's going to increase. They're going to become uh, hypertensive. This can lead to tremors and seizures, and they become very, very febrile. And so if this goes untreated or unnoticed, this can obviously lead to, um, in severe cases, this could lead to death even, okay? So again, we're thinking hypermetabolic. If we have this extreme hyperthyroidism, we're going to become even more hypermetabolic, leading to, and when we talk metabolic, right, we're talking those metabolic processes, things like heart rate, things like um, um, digestive hypertension, um, all these types of things are, are what we're talking about when we say hypermetabolic. So how are we going to assess this? Well, the first thing we want to assess, obviously, are going to be our thyroid hormones. This is going to be T3 and T4, free T4, um, uh, and thyroid stimulating hormone. And we could have a positive radioactive iodide uptake skin. So what we'll do is we'll we'll provide the patient uh, radioactive iodine, and then we'll see that the, the thyroid takes that up. Okay, and as the thyroid takes that up, we can then scan and determine that they may be hyper um, uh, hyperthyroid. Okay, we'll also notice a goiter. A goiter, you know, is the is the A goiter is like on the neck, that will be the bulging right around the thyroid gland. That would be a goiter. Bulging eyes, this is of course it's like the Graves disease. Cardiac wise, like we already talked about previously, they're gonna have tachycardia, hypertension, palpitations. Okay, their heart's gonna be beating very fast. Okay, neurologically again, thinking hypermetabolic, hyperactive reflexes, emotional instability, agitation, hand tremors. They're just, they're, they're gonna have so much energy, so much, um, uh, moving so quickly and stuff, they're not going to be able to contain it, it's going to look like. Sensory, they're going to have exophthalmus, that Graves disease, which will lead to um, blurred vision. Uh, they'll have fine, thin hair. In women, this could be, they could, it could lead to amenorrhea, uh, and in men, it could lead to a decreased libido. Metabolically, they're going to have an increased metabolic rate, and they're going to notice weight loss, okay? So initially, your patient might uh, really appreciate that they're losing all this weight, but then what, what you need to teach them is that this isn't a good thing, okay? We, we, while it's nice to lose weight without having to try, um, these other things are, are very negative, okay? The increased the tachycardia, the neurological effects, um, the uh, reproductive effects. And then if it goes into the thyroid storm, of course, even more severe. So we wanna really teach our patient that, that um, if they start having this unexpe unexplained weight loss and things like that, of course, we wanna investigate that um, for thyroid uh, disease. Uh, and, or possibly cancer or something like that. So how are we going to treat this? Okay, again, we're thinking hypermetabolic, right? So we want to provide them a nice, quiet place to rest to try to decrease stimulation, okay? So when you get your question about what, what type of environment you want for your patient with thyroid disease or with uh, hyperthyroidism, you want to put them in a quiet room, lights out, um, TV off, and try to just kind of calm them. Of course, we're going to be provide cardiac monitoring. We're going to be looking for this tachycardia, it could be to SVT or something, 
and we want to provide antithyroid medications, PTU, which is propyl thyroursil. We want to maintain a patent airway. Remember, the patient's going to um, can have these neurological effects with it too, so we want to make sure they're able to maintain their airway. We can provide eye protection. Uh, we want to provide moisturizing drops. We want to try to cover their eyes, and the patient, when they're not in the hospital, needs to receive regular eye examinations. One thing we can do too is radioactive iodine. So what this radioactive iodine does, it actually is the thyroid gland likes to take up iodine, right? That's why they, the, you know, we started iodizing our salt was because we noticed a lot of, pe of, of the population here in the United States uh, were, ha were developing goiters. So one way to prevent that was to simply add iodine to, to salt because the thyroid takes that up. And so what we can do is, is we create this radioactive iodine and we provide that to the patient and the, the uh, thyroid gland takes that up. It takes up that radioactive iodine as well. And so that radioactive iodine can start to destroy thyroid cells over six to eight weeks or so. Obviously, we're gonna avoid this in pregnancy and we're gonna monitor lab values for hypothyroidism. Because if we go too far and destroy too much of these thyroid cells, we can then um, lead to hypothyroidism. We can also do a, a resection of the, of the thyroid gland, right? So if we do this, if we do provide the surgical remover, removal for this patient, there's a couple things to really keep in mind. Now, and this, this also goes, anytime we're talking about the thyroid gland, right? If we're talking thyroid cancer or whatever, or hyperthyroidism, and we're talking about removal of the thyroid gland, think about where the thyroid gland sits. It's right there near the trachea, okay? So we're gonna monitor our airway. We wanna assess for any sort of obstruction um, that could be bleeding, um, or, or any sort of scar tissue that could obstruct the airway and decrease our patient's ability to maintain their airway. We need to have a tracheotomy kit available. Because again, like we said, anytime we're doing surgery, uh, right near the thyroid gland, there's a huge risk of compromising our patient's airway. So to, to prevent uh, that risk, we wanna keep our tracheotomy kit available with the patient. We need to maintain the patient's Simi Fowler's position. This will help to um, aid them in, in maintaining their airway and getting good uh, respirations and good ventilation. We're gonna monitor our surgical site for bleeding, of course, and monitor for hypocalcemia. Um, the thyroid gland aids in calcium, um, and so having calcium gluconate or something like that available if the patient goes severely hypocalcemic. And then we're gonna want a minimal talking um, and minimal, just minimal uh, airway stimulation um, in the immediate post-op uh, period, okay? So those are kind of the things we're gonna do for our hyperthyroid patient. Um, if you have any questions, as always, just be 